Hi, this is Rob Beardsley with Lone Star Capital, and today I wanted to shoot a quick video about property tax underwriting. So property taxes are highly specific to the county, so I can't give broad underwriting advice as to you know whatever market you're in, but for us, we're in Texas, and Texas for property taxes is predominantly an income-driven appraiser. And so, so each county has their nuances, but generally speaking, the counties in Texas are income-driven to derive their property tax valuation. So a common term thrown around in uh, prop the property tax world is sales chasing. So people always worry that their property taxes are going to go way up when they uh, buy a property because it's going to reflect the delta between, let's say, the, what the seller bought the property for and what they're buying the property for, especially if there's a big difference. There could be a big jump, especially if the county is sales chasing. Essentially what that means is looking at the sales price to then reassess the property and, and to determine the new taxes. However, interesting about Texas, it's a non-disclosure state. So you actually don't disclose your price anywhere publicly if you don't want to. And so what that means is the county uh, assessor doesn't know what you paid for the property. Uh, they can guess. They typically get public information, which is loan data. So they'll look at your loan and they'll make an inference as to what your value that you probably paid for it, but again, they're not really focusing on value to come up with their assessed value. They're really driven by income. And so the tool they use based on income to drive valuation is what is called a, a loaded cap rate or an implied cap rate. And what that is, is they take your NOI, but they don't factor in the property taxes. So they take NOI minus property taxes, and then they divide it by a cap rate plus the property tax rate. So kind of hard to put the, all those pieces together, but it's actually a really slick way to, I would say, fairly come up with a assessed value that reflects cap rate rather than price per door or comp analysis. And so just to give you an idea, basically if the county says, okay, well, class B properties in this neighborhood or in this submarket should be valued at a six cap, what they'll do is they'll take the NOI, not factor in the property taxes, divide that NOI by 6% as the cap rate, but plus the property tax rate. So let's say property taxes are 2%. That means they'll divide by 8% to derive an assessed value. And then that assessed value will determine property taxes. So that way when you factor property taxes back into the NOI, you'll actually have a six cap on your hands. So the, the assessor gets exactly what they want. The property tax is valued at a six cap and that way you're paying a six cap basically for your property taxes. So with that in mind, that's generally speaking how we look at underwriting our property taxes when we're looking at buying a property and we forecast the property taxes through the life of the hold period, which for us is typically three to five years. So something that's very interesting is the fact that with a value add plan, you have likely projecting big increases in NOI, right? You might buy a property with a million dollars NOI day one, but your business plan of renovations, increasing occupancy, other income, might push that NOI to actually double to two million. And that can be a scary thing because that could actually lead to a substantial increase in your property taxes. And if you don't underwrite for that substantial increase, I mean, you know, maybe you just underwrite that initial bump at purchase, you could be in a lot of trouble and really uh, miss a lot of expenses that are going to that you're going to incur later down the road after you implement your business plan. So, something that we do is we look at not just where we think the property taxes are going to be reassessed to at purchase because they can be reassessed anywhere from 70 to 90 percent of your purchase price. But furthermore, we take a, a step further and we look at what is our business plan as to, as it relates to raising revenue, raising NOI, and how that correlates to where we think property taxes are headed for the property. So we, we somewhat trend the property taxes in lockstep with our revenue uh, increases. So if we think that we're going to push revenue you know, 20% over that five-year hold period, well, we should conservatively project taxes, property taxes to go up similarly by 20% over that five-year hold period. And this also, doing this not only helps more accurately forecast your NOI over the whole period, but it also helps forecast accurately your terminal valuation, right? Something that you'll often see is people, when they project to sell, they can either do one of two things. They can just use their final year's property taxes in their NOI calculation, and then that's, that's the, 
the NOI they're going to use to generate a terminal valuation, or they'll actually tax adjust their sales price. And what they'll do is they'll maybe bump the property taxes up by 10%. And that's their tax adjustment, which indicates what the property taxes will be for the future buyer. And of course, when we're selling a property, it's not the seller's cap rate that matters, it's the buyer's cap rate that matters. Buyers will be underwriting your property and determining what fair market value is for them based on their underwriting, which smart buyers are gonna to underwrite to the future taxes. They don't care what you pay, they're gonna be caring what, what they pay. So doing this trend is gonna more accurately help you forecast your property taxes and also more importantly, your future buyer's property taxes. So this was a uh, hopefully a helpful video about property tax underwriting. Remember, this is specific to Texas where we do most of our acquisitions. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.